Greetings, B toppers and uh, amateur ball players, and anybody else that's watching this. Welcome to another episode of B Top Live. I'm Josh Nichols, and I I run the B Top group, the B Top page. And just in case you don't know what B Top means, it means baseball training for older people. Okay, so um, we changed the name here recently uh, to be so that the word old just wasn't so threatening. So. Um, but I uh, appreciate all of you being here um, for uh, these episodes. Uh, it's something that's really cool. I love doing these uh, on Sunday nights and visiting with wonderful people like our guest that we have today. Um, uh, Eddie Lamar will be joining us here in a little bit. Uh, and uh, he's going to be talking to us about pitching and uh, uh, pitching on as uh, grown men, taking care of yourself. And uh, uh, so he's going to be talking about pitcher health as well. And then I just want to mention uh, to all the uh, YouTube audience, we have a really cool group that we do these videos live in. If you want to participate in these groups, please join the BTOP Legends group. And if you, and uh, I will put a link to it in the com into the description of the video. But uh, an easy way to find it is just go going to the B the Baseball Training for Older People uh, Facebook page and uh, just clicking on the, the groups, the group link. And uh, we got two groups on there, BTOP B Legends, which the, the BTOP Live uh, broadcast that you see here, that's where it airs. And then also we have uh, the, a newer group called BTOP Ball Busters, which is more about the, the, the comical side of baseball. So let's get to, uh, uh, Mr. Lamar and bring him on here in just a second. So he's been around the game a long time as a player and he still plays um, and he as a coach and he's even uh, had experience working in the MLB uh, throw, as a BP coach or a BP uh, facilitator. I don't know exactly what they call that. So but anyways, uh, you know, he's he's been around a long time and, and after visiting with him, he clearly has a passion for this game and for pitchers. So uh, he has a lot of good things to say, so without further ado... How are you doing, man? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. I'm glad we handled the technical aspect. <laughs> well, last it's, always, uh, it's always a... Uh, uh, you know, that's, that's where my anxiety comes from the most, you know, because uh, it's, it's going to be unpredictable every time with everybody. And just, uh, just let everybody know, too, uh, this is me. This is uh, Josh. Uh, I did shave my beard recently, so... Uh, but it'll grow back eventually, uh, just in case you don't recognize yeah. me. So. Is that a Yankee spring training thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I didn't even know the Yankees did that. Um, that, can, that can cause some fights if you're opposed to that around uh, here. So you're, uh, you threw, did you throw BP for the Yankees or for the Mets? I did. I threw BP for both. I threw BP for the 1989 Yankees. They, they called me over at St. John's. They, they fired – the manager and every coach except John Stearns, uh -huh. and they fired BP pitchers and batting practice uh, bullpen catchers. Really, and there was a connection with St. John's through an assistant general manager, and they called me and asked me if I'd come over and, and help out. So uh, Bucky Dent had taken over from from Dallas Green. Uh, John Stearns was the surviving coach, and I reported to him and threw BP and hit fungos and cool. did whatever Stearns needed me to do. Awesome. Did they require you to shave your beard? Thank you, <laughs> No, I didn't have one then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, but to begin with, though, uh, I'm really curious, and, I, and I'd like, and I know we talked a little bit about this before you came on, um, because in just a little bit that you told me, I thought it'd be a good uh, story for everybody to hear on just how you ended up in this realm of uh, men's baseball or amateur baseball. Well, it ended up in, in amateur as well. The first time I, I actually met Steve Sigler was he, he walked into the uh, baseball office at St. John's where I was the pitching coach to really borrow our field or know if we'd give him a field permit, mm -hmm. which we didn't. Uh, and I got to talking to him. I heard I never heard of MSBL before. And they just started out Long Island. We're looking to expand. And um, they had a big name major league pitcher playing in Long Island, a guy named Dave Lamachick. He was a Detroit Tiger and a Toronto Blue Jay relief pitcher and pitched in an all-star game back in the early 70s. And mm -hmm. That was the big thing was, you know, the Silver Bullets have Dave Lamachick. They're the team to beat. And so 
as, and I didn't have time for it when I was coaching, although I was interested. Uh, my summers were packed with recruiting, keeping kids in summer school, getting apartments, and, and doing a lot of camps. Mm -hmm. and, but as soon as I got out of coaching full-time, went back to work in the real world, uh, then I joined the, the MSBL. And uh, it kind of went crazy, you know, just playing a lot, coaching a lot for my own team that was playing up to a 70 game schedule for a while. Yeah. And kind of slowed down a little bit. Gosh, man, I wish we had that here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, but yeah, um, but you, uh, you told me a, a story that involved, uh, that kind of got you back in the game a little bit. It sounds like it was involved your son. I don't know if you want to. Uh, to tell that story or not, but I found yeah, it really when, interesting. When, when I was coaching, um, my two boys, uh, Paul and Brian, uh, they were, uh, you know, six and, and five or, you know, maybe a little older, maybe like eight and nine or something. And they were tagging along with me for all the camps, all the clinics and, uh, and the games. And I was managing a team in the Atlantic Collegiate League called the National Collegians. And we were a highly organized team. It was my success uh, and uh, the, the visual image of how I, I ran the team with the discipline and the, the, the way the team was conducted uh, that got St. John's to notice me and offered me a full-time job as their pitching coach for a you know, major powerhouse mm -hmm. in the Northeast. So, uh, you know, Paul and Brian were always out there on the field. You know, they were the guy, and I had him in full uniform. We had custom-made uniforms so that he could match the team. Or, you know, I said, you're part of the team, you're not my son right now, the next couple of hours. So he's bringing up the foul balls to the umpires and stuff. And lo and behold, um, you know, 25 years later, uh, Paul becomes a, 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 a college head coach. And um, those very same umpires that thought he was a cute little kid are now throwing him out of games because of his mouth. <laughs> but um, it was in, I, and I'd been out of coaching from the college level for going on 19 years mm -hmm. and, and just still very busy with, with men's amateur ball and doing a lot of private lessons and, and camps and clinics on the side. Mm -hmm. um, so Paul had asked me around Christmas time in 2014, if I would go to uh, Dallas with him for the National Coaches Convention, the, the ABCA, American Baseball Coach Association. And I said, uh, yeah, I can get off of work and, and go. It was, it was free, uh, somebody canceled and they couldn't get refunds on the, the airfare or the hotel or the ABCA ticket. So I went and kind of really got motivated as a player standpoint. And then I started thinking about it. It's like a four day event early in January. And I got kind of thinking about why am I not coaching anymore? I, I enjoyed this. I could be up on stage talking about pitching instead of these guys. And um, it was on the way home that Paul offered me a coaching job and got me back in the game um, to be his pitching coach at the College of Mount St. Vincent, uh, mm -hmm. a, a D3 school in the Skyline Conference in New York. And um, he said, no, don't worry about it. I want you to get in trouble at work. So the practice is in January, February, or uh, 8 o'clock at night. And we've got somebody passing through Manhattan to, to get to the campus. And he'll pick you up. And I'll bring you home to, to, to Queens and Long Island. So it worked. And uh, you know, I was good for all the weekend games and missed most of the midweek games. The, the team had tremendous success. We went from winning just six games the year before to win in 18 games. Uh, we led the conference in earn run average, and we cut the walks down from close to nine per nine innings to less than three per nine innings. And I said, we led the t conference in earn run average. We went from like eight and change to uh, below three. Hmm. And with the same kids, it was just, you know, making them train different and making them think different. Right. Got the most out of their ability. I've got Two Big East championship rings from St. John's and 26 guys get drafted. Went to a lot of regionals. Unfortunately, never a World Series. The season with my son, it only lasted one year because he moved to Texas. But that season was my most enjoyable, rewarding season as a pitching coach in college baseball. Awesome. Very awesome. He, he was, he's a good head coach, and I hope he gets back into it now that we're back in New York. Yeah, so he, he came back too? He came back too. He moved to Texas, and we followed him down there oh, yeah. a couple of months later. Gotcha. For the opportunity to be near the grandkids and and uh, yeah, you know all the opportunities. Yeah, awesome man. That's a, I love that story, dude. Um, and uh, um, uh, I'm sad to see you go back to New, New York City because you were right in my backyard before you left. But yeah, well, yeah but I bet yeah. did you miss the, did you miss the the winter vortex that almost completely blacked out Texas? 
Uh, we did. Uh, I've been back here since two or three days before Christmas. Oh, okay, okay. And we're in Long Island now. I, I when I the first go round, I was in the city. Yeah. And now uh, we came out to Long Island. Yeah. But I'm in, in touch with my teammates, and you see, I'm I don't have the V top shirts and stuff, but I'm repping my two teams. Yeah. Because I got guys to say, you're not going to wear a National Yankee hat with the guys on the Tigers. And the Tigers are saying, you're not going to wear, you, know, you wear the Tiger hat. So right. I'm wearing both. Yeah. So my Houston Tigers that I was there, I've been in touch with them and they suffered dearly. Uh, one guy said he had seven pipes burst in his house. Yeah. Six of them an hour after the plumber just left. Yeah. And they're ripping apart walls and ceilings and stuff, trying to pass mm -hmm. these guys yeah. up. And I, I look on these... Uh, alerts that come up on your ring doorbell or your nest doorbell and stuff and everybody's looking to see who's got some some uh, pipes and fittings and yeah try to patch things up yeah so it's, through it now. It, you know coming on on the coattails of covid it was it, it felt a little bit apocalyptic you know i mean it was like what's going on here but what's your advice for uh amateur ballers especially pitchers uh that uh want to play this game into their 60s or 70s well, you know, something that um, that Lance MacArthur, and I don't know if Lance is on tonight, but Lance is one of my teammates uh, with the Houston Tigers. He said it perfectly the other the other day. And he's talking about conditioning. And, I, and, and I'm the same way as I condition for baseball. Hell, if I wouldn't play baseball, I'd be so out of shape. Mm -hmm. And it's the only thing that motivates me to get on that treadmill. It's the only thing that motivates me to pick up a pound of weight. So when you're on that treadmill, for example, and you just get that feeling that, you know, I want to go get off, but I still got minutes left on the timer. Mm -hmm. What motivates me is it's only the eighth inning. It's only the seventh inning. It's only the eighth inning. Right. I got to get to the ninth inning. I'm not losing this game. Yeah. You know, and, and that's just my, my driver. You know, I, I, I do everything in the game with the same in, in intentions of intensity and stuff. I'm not physically as agile and as strong as I was when I was 20, but it doesn't mean that anything as, as that I, I, I don't do things differently. Mm -hmm. I, they're just not to the degree that I did before. Uh, for example, um, I, I run to, to and back and forth from the mound every inning. Mm -hmm. Something I learned in the early seventies from white and blue. I, I, I thought it looked good presentation going out there and showing the hitters that, Hey, I'm ready for you. Let's go bring it on. Right. You know, and instead of walking back, that took, kind of looks lazy. I want to hustle back. I'm part of the team. I'm, you know, just like everybody else. Right. And, um, you know, I, I, I did that when I was 20, and I do that when I'm 64. Right. Um, another analogy with that is uh, I play every game. I go to every practice like the scouts are still looking at me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I give the same effort that I did when I was 20. Right. Who knows? You, you, you put that effort. And, you know, that happened something. We, we now feel mm -hmm. the one time at St. John's who had bad batting practice. Mm -hmm. And I'm throwing. And he slams his bat, throws it into mm -hmm. the top of the screen. He'd go to, like, one of these Wooly Mays Hayes, and everything was popped up. Right. And then he just flipped out in the cage throwing his bat. Mm -hmm. And I told him after, I said, you see the guy that was talking to me when I came off the mound from BP? Director of scouting, San Diego Padres. You gave him a hell of a show. That's cool. That's cool. And, you know, I mean, the kid only played independent ball right. after that. You know, so, you know, you never know who's watching. Right. You know, if you could just go over some of your favorite drills that are, you know, easy, doable, but are, you know, are good for mechanics and, and keeping your arm healthy. Um, uh, let's let's get to it. OK. Um, you know, one of the things I, I want to just start off with is the the difference in in coaching the age of pitchers. Like I coach college guys that were, you know, draft picks and. And, and then at night, I may coach a 10-year-old doing things, mm -hmm. uh, trying to, to make his little league team and, and be a better player, you know. And the, the, uh, the general points are still the same, you know, balance position, power position, release position, you know, how you get there may be a little bit different for the younger kid because he just doesn't have the kind of athleticism. Well, the same thing kind of applies to the older guy. He doesn't have the kind of athleticism. So we, we're going to simplify some things, which is something that I'm personally going through right now, mm -hmm. trying to shorten up my, my wind up, uh, you know, from that high leg kick and that long arm path to something a little bit shorter to uh, save some energy uh, w with me. Um, you know, but I, I, I was lucky that I, uh, right after high school, played for some good coaches where I learned a lot. And then it, it, it got me motivated to... Uh, 
just make it a, a passion and want to learn everything there is about pitching. You know, similar to, I, you know, I haven't seen Mike go to 40 years, but I know we're, we're like just one guy's in a mound and one guy's at home plate. Uh, the library of baseball books behind me, all about pitching. You know, I want to read everything, hear everything, mm -hmm. and try everything about pitching. And sometimes I get an idea and I'll, I'll take it and run with it and do something totally outside the box. But Mike and I played for a, a team uh, from Queens, New York, called the Flushing Tigers. It was managed by two Detroit Tiger Scouts. And um, a lot of the guys signed and played the minor leagues, and there were probably half a dozen of them that got to the big leagues from that team. The manager oh. of that team was a baseball genius and taught me a lot. Um, you know, and how I got to that team was um, uh, my college coach. I went to New York Tech in Long Island. And I was pitching, I didn't even get in the damn game. Mm -hmm. I'm throwing in the bullpen in a high school game, and the New York Tech head coach sees me and comes up and, and talks to me about college. I said, I'm only, only a junior. I'm not really thinking about where I'm going. But he says, okay, I want to introduce you to this coach that I want you to play for his team so I can, I can keep an eye on you and follow you. So he introduced me to that Tiger Scout. And because of my college head coach and that Tiger Scout, it's why I became a coach today, to give back. Mm -hmm. uh, my college coach, by the way, uh, left the college after one year with me to become a scout, and he's in the Scouts Hall of Fame, having signed Frank Thomas and about a hundred other. Wow, guys. that's cool. That's really cool. So you know, brilliant baseball minds. Yeah. And and I I do this because of Warren Allman and Al Goldis. That's awesome. My, my two coaches. Yeah. Um, you know, so so and I've adapted. Um, I'm I'm 65, but I may think like I'm 25 at times. You know, you, you look at all these Facebook clubs and talking baseball and stuff, and, uh, you know, like the big dirty word is the A word, and it, it ain't the one you're sitting on. It's, it's analytics. Mm -hmm. Analytics, you know, my, you know what. Right. Uh, anal numbers have always been in the game. Right. Baseball's a, called the thinking man's game. Yeah. If we didn't have analytics, how did they know to bat Babe Ruth third, Lou Gehrig fourth? Right. Right? Batting average. That's analytics. Studying data. Yeah. yeah. And determine, you know, who's going to bunt and who's not going to bunt. You know, it's just that right now, technology has allowed us to, to, to take it to the next level, make it easier. Yeah. We kept pitching charts. Pitching charts go back to the 1950s or earlier. And it's, it's what you did. I threw your fastball, a little one for the fastball, a little two for the curveball, et cetera. So the next time you go up, we look at the chart and we say, well, this is what we're going to throw, Josh, you know? Mm -hmm. So we use that. But right now, Tomorrow's pitcher doesn't have to sit there and write this down. Video does it. Every pitch is recorded. The data from the pitch, the, the movement on the pitch, the, the rotation of the ball, the, the, you know, the, uh, the velocity, everything is recorded, and, and it's there compiled for every pitch in the game. So it's easier. They're collecting more of it, and they're getting more use out of it. The one thing I kicked myself in the butt for that I could have been you know, famous for is that we had some other charts at St. John's with spray charts. Spray chart is, is a single page for, for every pitter. So I've got a, a chart for Josh. Mm -hmm. it's, a di it's a picture of a diamond. And every time you have an at-bat against us and put a ball in play, we chart it on here. So a ground ball is going to be a dotted line. A, a line drive is going to be a straight line. A fly ball would be a loopy line. And where to go on the field, left, right, center, right? Right. So – Left-handed dead pull hitter gets up, and we've got this spray chart that shows all these balls that are hit to the right side. And the best we can do is to say, okay, guys, he's coming your way. <laughs> move, a step, move a step over this way. Yeah, yeah. Why the heck didn't I think about putting the shortstop and the third baseman on the other side yeah. of the diamond? Yeah. You know? It's, it's one of the most brilliant things it's, it's defensively for baseball. Yeah. It's, it gets outs. Yeah, and uh, it gets criticized a lot by the the old school guys. Yeah, so I'm an old school in age, but yeah. not not here I ain't old school. Right, you know. So so getting back to my well, to my my notes or some of the things that that I that I do is um, you know we'll look at my 2020 season as an as an example. You want to take some time off, you know, after the the season to to kind of rest your body, get rid of some of the aches and pains, and then when you get back into the gym. You know, the, the, there's you're going to break it down into um, off season or, or preseason before the team workouts, then preseason with the team, and then what do you do during the season? 
you know. So in preseason by myself, you know, I, I did the, um, the, the exercises to strengthen the areas that were hurting uh, around like the hips, the quads, the hammies, the groin, all that stuff was, was rugged coming out of 2019. Mm -hmm. So I fixed all that, rested it, healed it, and, and spent time doing exercises to build up some strength with it. And then I also started to add like some total body strength. And I'm not a big muscular guy, but, but I wanted to, to be a little bit stronger than I was last time without losing flexibility. And then, so you're doing that for a couple of weeks and then you're good you're throwing in, you know, and, and the, the mm -hmm. throwing, like I said, it was in the gym and also in my garage. I, I hung a, a 12 by 12 net in the back wall of the garage and I threw into there. It's only 30 feet with the garage door closed. I could open the door and throw a little bit farther, but my, that wasn't my purpose. Mechanics are no different whether I'm throwing 30 feet or if I'm throwing 60 feet, six inches. So I'm getting repetitions with my mechanics without burning myself out, right. without getting a sore arm. I could get a million reps of my mechanics. The other thing that I'm accomplishing out of that short distance is the feel of the touch, the touch pitches, mm -hmm. my curveball, my, my slider, my, my change up, all those pitches. Hell, you can lose the feel of one of those pretty quickly. And, and you know, that, that pitch is, why wasn't it as, as good as it used to be, you know? So I wanted to, to work on my curveball and uh, my changeup. And I always like to, to identify my weaknesses. My fastball slider and my strength. Mm -hmm. Holding guys on base, throwing a, 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 an out curveball are, are not my strength. Throwing an out changeup is not my strength, you know? But I want them to be. Right. So I put in the time working on that by myself. So then when the, when the season starts with the team, you don't have time. They're not there for just you. There's, you know, 15 guys. And everybody's got an agenda. Everybody's got something to do. And the, the coach wants to, you know, get the practice over and be, mm -hmm. be fair for everyone. So you got to do that stuff on your own, even when the team starts. So when the team starts, you can spend time on doing what the team needs you to do. That may be just simply shagging. Mm -hmm. Or it may be some some PFPs covering first base, and, you know, some pickoff and bunt defense drills, and um, it might be throwing some batting practice. It might be throwing your bullpen, but it might not be. You know, sometimes you know if you're late, uh, guys have already thrown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you you got you got you to gotta throw, and, and and you know the number one cardinal rule in baseball that I have is never throw to warm up, always warm up to throw. So it's always stretch, run, throw before you pick up a ball. Right. You know, so by the time I do my stretch, run, throw, if everybody else is thrown and they're taking BP, I don't get to throw. Who's going to throw with mm -hmm. me? You know, so you got to get there early to get your stretch, run in before you throw sometimes. Right. So that you can be on sync with your teammates. Yeah. But it's always that, you know, make sure you got a little heart rate going and a little bit of sweat flowing before you start throwing. And then you start short, you get a little longer, a little longer, mm -hmm. a little longer. And that's how you protect your arm right. um, and, and stay and stay healthy. The other thing is that um, I mentioned that there's nobody to throw with. Well, that that's always true. The older you get, who the hell wants to play catch with a six year old, right. right? So it's not like, you know, the guy's 20, whatever, you, you, you go and place other guys to throw with. So in, in New York, before I moved to Texas, I would throw off a handball court. You know, we play in a, in a, in a night leg, a week night leg. So like three or four days after I, I threw, I'll go throw again off a handball wall. I couldn't find a damn handball wall in the state of Texas. That's why I put that net up in wow. the garage. You yeah. Know, so now that I'm back here, I got the net in the backyard already today. So um, you, do, you do a lot of that to get that feel on the touch. Mm -hmm. And then long toss, you know, I just, so again, you can't find anybody long toss with you. Just go to an open field, bring a bag of balls, throw them, go get them mm -hmm. and throw them again. Yeah. You know, so you get your long toss in that way. Yeah. So, um, and then, you know, once your, your season starts, you got to have some type of plan. You know, there was a, a teammate of mine that I, uh, that I coached uh, at, at St. John's, an infielder. He was playing at a real competitive, played a, a year or two of pro ball. And then he was playing in a competitive league in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody's familiar with Brooklyn. There's a, a famous highway going by there called the Belt Parkway. And his saying was, you can't go from the Belt Parkway to the batter's box and be any good. Mm -hmm. In other words, you can't just show up, get out of the car, put your shoes on, go out and, and, and get three hits. Right. You know, you got to get there and do your T work. You got to, right. you know, first, you know, get your stretching in and your running in and your cardio and loosen up your arm, do some soft toss, and, you know, take some BP. 
uh, it's the same thing with pitching. You know, we, we can't go from the, the, the car seat to the mound and expect to be a good. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's garbage in, garbage out. Right. You know, what you're going to get out of it. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is that I find that, you know, I've got a lot of experiences in, in baseball, mm -hmm. whether it be as a player or a coach. And, you know, when you think back to some of the things that coaches told me and some of the things – that I told pitchers, you know, they're so vague. You know, an example is, you know, make an adjustment out there. Make an adjustment. You know, the guy's struggling. Mm -hmm. What the hell do you mean an adjustment, you know? Right. Be a little more specific. And, and when you're 50, you've got like this, this carpet bag full of stuff that's happened to you in the past, both good and bad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, something's going wrong. Reach in that carpet bag and find something that's going to work at this moment. And an example of that is one night, I get to a game out Long Island with my National Yankee team, and right away in the first inning, I can tell that I that my curveball just doesn't feel good, and it's hurting my thumb in here. Just the pressure mm -hmm. between the two fingers, that the middle finger and the thumb hurts. Yeah, I'm gonna get a curveball, or I'm gonna get knocked out of this game early. We only got nine guys. It means I gotta play right field. Mm -hmm. that, that ain't me. Yeah. So I gotta find something quick. Mm -hmm. So I remembered back to a pitch I hadn't thrown in almost 40 years. The, the, the college slider that my coach taught me, mm -hmm. just gripping the ball like a football and throw it over a keg of beer. Okay, it's, it's got less snap to it. Just throw it over a keg of beer. Mm. And I'll talk about uh, Trevor Bauer in, in a second with that. And it worked. It worked so well that night that it, it, it helped me stay in the game and win the game. But it also is a pitch that I now use. And, and I'm a... I, becoming a big Trevor Bauer fan because of his work ethic mm -hmm. and his love for pitching and, and the analytics, et cetera. And I read something with him that there really is no snap to get the, the rotation, the, you know, the spin rate on the ball. It's, you know, holding it the right way, finger pressure with the right way. And it's the hand speed coming through there is going to get you that ro rotation. Right. This that is, makes sense. Something that he said that I think is pretty interesting. Yeah. You know, um, so once, once the season starts, find something to do midweek, keep yourself in shape, um, you know, and, and make sure you show up to the game ready to play and not, not just uh, to have fun. One of the things I saw, I was supposed to do it today, but because of the rain, there's a group here in Long Island I saw on Facebook that just has, uh, I hope some of the guys are on here tonight from this. It's Long Island Recreational Baseball, not a league, just guys that want to show up and they pick teams on the fly. And they, they actually do rock, paper, scissors to see who's going to be the home team. I assume there's no umpire. Sandlot style. And I asked yeah. Them, like, yeah, I asked them, you know, can I come out with you guys and just throw? I need somebody to throw with, you know. Yeah. I don't care if you get me in a game or not. And that would make me better for Tuesday night when my team plays. Yeah, yeah, that's you know, awesome. That's, that's a good idea. So uh, well, that's pretty much like what I do, but but everybody's got to come up with their own routine. One of the changes also made my routine, I think, in 2019 is because I had those leg injuries and I had those minor leg injuries because the Houston Tigers let me bat. I never hit before right. I didn't start batting in 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, doing pretty well at it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm also running the bases and, and you know, tagging up and scoring mm -hmm. a fly ball and going first or third on a base hit. I think that's where the different type of running that pitchers used to do. You're right. So what I did was I cut back on my pregame running. Mm -hmm. Run very little before games. I used to run pretty good before games. And on my in between games stuff, mm -hmm. you know, I run a lot. We would go play the tournaments at Disney and if I'm not pitching today, I'll see you guys in nine innings. I'm gonna run around Disney. Yeah. <laughs> Can be back for the right, last right. out. You know? I'm not doing that anymore. I'm power walking. Yeah. Most of 65, going on 65, so you guys just you know, don't want the impact yeah. on the knees, the back, the hips, etc. Yeah. So modify, but make your plan, you know, yeah. en encompassing things like, uh, you know, weighted balls or, uh, you know, J, J band. Oh. Yeah, man, just knocked it off. That's all right. Uh, J, J band. Yes. Yeah. The tubes. Um, what else is, is there? The uh, towel drill. The towel drill, you know, yeah. simple, simple towel, kitchen towel or something. And, and as you're going through, it generates, builds up hand speed as you're whipping it through right. the zone. Yeah. You know, so make up your routine and, you know, don't be too, oh, oh, you know, uh, OCD yeah. about it. You know, sometimes you can't get on the field because mm -hmm. there's a game going on ahead of you. Yeah. Sometimes it, it's wet and things are, you know, canceled right. because of rain or something. 
You know, yeah. so imp improvise, but you got a foundation of what you like to do right. to get you ready. Yeah, you know, you just gave me an idea that maybe what, one thing we can do in the group is uh, um, get uh, people to post their – get the pitchers on there to – post their pregame routines or their kind of their, their season plans or preseason plans, things like that. And then, you know, cause people can borrow from each other, which is what, you know, Absolutely. one reason why I do, I'm doing these videos and, and this group is because when I started getting on, you know, Facebook and YouTube, I can't, I couldn't find anything that was specifically geared to working with grown men playing amateur ball because we're not, we're not professionals that are doing this for a living where we can, or we have a strength trainer and uh, coaches there with us 24 seven. I mean, we can have our other jobs and our families and things like that. And um, you know, but we still need, there's still things that we can do that aren't to that intensity where we can take good care of our bodies and our tendons and, and joints and things like that as we age, you know? Yeah. And so. I also think that the type of work you do make, makes a difference. You know, I, I'm, That's right. I'm working indoors behind a desk and a, and a calculator you know, every day. And I'm not in the, the kind of shape as guys that are, that are working construction jobs and, and carrying things mm -hmm. and, and being full fit. Uh, so I, I tend to have more work to do before the season than yeah. perhaps somebody that has a physical job. Yeah, exactly. I'm the same way. I work behind a desk and, um, you don't know, have to be, be much more intentional with being active. You know, but also, you know, we only have so many bullets in the gun. That's right. So, so, why, so why waste them? And you got to know from that 50 years of experience yeah. when, to, when to use them. That's right. You know, so my, my warm-ups, I may throw a lot, but I'm not, I'm not at full velocity until as a starting pitcher mm -hmm. until I see the umpires going to home plate and exchange right. lineup cards. Well, then it's yeah. time to get serious. But, I, you know, you mentioned, like, kind of backing off on the run and a little bit. I did this. I've done the same thing with uh, – just playing catch, pre, uh, the pregame catch, playing catch, you know, um, I've, uh, I want to focus more now on stretching my arm uh, than uh, getting out there and playing catch for 45 minutes or whatever, you know, because then my, then my arm's just worn out, you know, and I, I play third base and I'm, I'm going to get a few throws. I'd like to be able to have a, <laughs> have some strength, you know, uh, when I go to throw it. So I get out there and play catch till I'm warm and then I get back to the dugout and I work on stretches, you know. Well, it's kind of like like being a relief pitcher, you know. Yeah. You just don't have the time to, to make that many throws. So you'll use the, the J bands to, to make up for. You can, you know, be pulling on that band two innings before you're called in. Right. And, and it only takes you, you know, eight or ten throws. That's the other one of my pet peeves about amateur ball is, um, you know, I don't mind pitching relief. I kind of like, like the role, but – I need somebody in the bullpen that can give me a legitimate warm up. I can't throw to somebody who's up high and is all worried about, you know, protecting his family jewels. <laughs> well, I want to throw a breaking ball in the dirt. Right, right. If I go out there in the mound and I'm not used to throwing a breaking ball in the dirt, I'm going to hang it and then I get yeah. back up third base again. I want to do that. Yeah. There was a, I made a, a, one of my posts I put was uh, something like, what, what is one uh, situation in baseball that's kind of intimidating to you? And a pitcher, I can't remember who it was, uh, posted new catchers. Uh, it's actually a guy on my team, actually. I remember now. His name's I Call. He posted new catchers, you know, because of that reason, because he doesn't know. Like, it's just, again, it goes back to the dance thing. It's like a new dance partner, you know. And does he know my, my throws? Is he going to is he going to give me, uh, you know, the type of effort that, I, that I'm expecting from uh, based upon the type of pitcher that I am, you know. And so, but anyways, that's all we can go, you know, yeah. Having a good, having a good catch is really, yeah. really important. To us. Hey, good defensive catch. do you want to do this again sometime? Because, uh, Michael Lagoda made a good point. He's like, you guys should do a part two. And, and, uh, I, I, I agree. I'd like to have you back sometime if you're willing. Sure. Sure. The only thing we can get into with, with, with pitching, you know, we'll go over pitches and yeah. situations and things like that. Yeah. I think it'd be great. I can't give away too, I can't give away too much because Mike may be facing me this time. <laughs> I hope not. I hope, I hope he's, you know, playing on my side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I appreciate you taking out time because I know it's uh, pushing 11 o'clock your time. And um, uh, I hope to have you back on here and we'll do, we'll do this again. It's been it's been cool. My pleasure. Yeah, man. I thank you guys for you know, coming on and listening. Yeah, I appreciate everybody who watched this. And... Um, 
anybody you know got a question wants to reach out to me one-on-one -on -one, you know you know josh has uh, the connections for that right and this group uh uh is uh i mean this uh uh, broadcast uh, is only broadcast live in the BTOP Legends group. So, and Eddie is part of that group. And so I'm sure you can, you know, post something and tag him. But also, if you want to reach through me, I'd be happy to help you uh, there too if you have questions. But also, just on this, uh, on this thread, feel free to ask questions and we'll try to be paying attention to that. But appreciate everybody watching and hopefully next time we do something on the mountain let's do something man. yeah i would you know it'd be cool uh if uh you know if we could it, it'd be nice if i could ever get out to new york city and i'd get with you and michael and uh we do some something like this together on a field but we'll see what happens someday we'll see yeah. you never know all right man all right okay. take care everybody have, have a good thank night you, everybody all right take care guys